What's up everyone, Homemade Madness, welcome back and this time I've had a brilliant idea. You see the other day I was at the airport and they had this like human conveyor belt thing. <laughs> yep, one of those. And if you're walking on there, you can walk pretty fast. And then you can run really fast. And then I was like, yes, I need more of this. So the idea, small conveyor belts under my shoes with a tiny electric motor in there. <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm a bit worried it might be a little heavy, so I'm not sure if I can run with them on, but there's only one way to find out. Let's build them. Okay, so here's the plan. Got a go-kart tire. I'm gonna cut the sidewalls off there and only use the flat bit, and this will be our conveyor belt track, you know. Then to power it, I'm gonna use battery drill, not this one. And then for the shape of the tracks themselves, I don't want them to be flat. A bit boring, but I want them to have like the side profile of a tank. Looks way better. And while I'm at it, I figured I might as well add some suspension because, well, why not? Now let's see if we can make all this fit under my shoe. That sounds like a plan to the drawing board. All right, so quick look at the cat model. Yo, this is what I came up with. Here you can see the two main rollers and the smaller ones beneath them. And then of course the belt or track will go all the way around here like this. And then the suspension will work like this. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Mr. Madness, won't the track slip when the suspension travels because it gets shorter? No, we got a solution. Look, a link between the suspension arm and the front roller to move the front roller a little bit to keep the circumference the same. Uh, and all the rest of it is just sheet metal cut on my homemade plasma cutter. All right, enough talking. Let's start building. To the plasma. Oh, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what we have so far, pretty pleased with it. The shock is in there and seems to hold my weight pretty good. So I might actually have some suspension after all. So next up, power drain, the rear roller with the motor in it. So got two battery power drills, not the most expensive ones, but they are brushless, so they should be pretty powerful. And of course they have a gearbox in here, which means we can have two gears. All right, so like I said, the rear roller is gonna be the powered one. But as you can see, there's just no way this is gonna fit in here. So what I'm gonna do, chop it off here. Controller and battery will go in my hand or in my pocket. And then only the motor will go in the shoe. And then for the drive system, I'm gonna go with the direct drive with the motor inside the roller. It's the only place I have space. And also I don't wanna mess around with any belts and gears and anything. It's gonna be a little bit complicated fitting this inside the roller and making it work, but I'll figure it out. So first thing to do, chop it up and make a metal sleeve that fits around the motor. You know, I've been having this drill on the workbench, using it a little bit for this project. It's actually not a bad drill for the money. Little does it know though, it's digging its own grave. Next shot, you'll be decapitated, my friend. I'm sorry. All right, they fooled me. I thought this was aluminum, turns out it's just plastic. Looks pretty good though. Okay, so homemade lathe back in action. 
Still working fine. So for the next part, I need to take a little bit off of the outside of this part on the lathe. But how do I do it on the lathe if I clamp it in the chuck like this? Can't cut it. I'm gonna show you a cool little machinist trick. Alright, so this is the motor and I drilled the hole in the shaft for the wire to come out. Very nice. And off camera I already made this, which is basically the main roller with a big bearing on this side to fit this shaft on the motor. And this piece on the other side with threads to match the motor threads on one side and a smaller bearing for the entire roll to roll on on the other side. Okay, so let's put it all together. First, screw this part to the motor shaft and then we have this and this will go inside this tube with this shaft in this bearing. And to lock it all together, little Allen key screws in here. And then we have our finished hub motor roller thing. Now let's put it in the frame, see if it works. All right, so motor is in there, seems to work pretty good. Definitely pretty powerful. Yeah. And off camera, I did some more turning on the lathe. Made the rollers, just some tube with bearings in the ends. So let's mount these in here, put a tire around it and give it a shot. I'm excited. All right, feels super wrong to do this, but I guess let's go. Well, hey, it even fits. And I think this looks pretty awesome. It's like a major tank because that's what it is. Okay, <laughs> anyways, let's hook up the motor, and give it a try. <laughs> well, that seems to work pretty fast. Crawls over stuff pretty good too. It's actually quite fun to play with, but can it move me too? All right. Here goes nothing. All right, seems to work pretty good. Belt isn't slipping, which I was kind of expecting. It is fearing off to the side a little bit. So I'm just gonna make some flanges on these rollers to make sure it stays in place. I put some tensioners on the rear here to keep the belt nice and tight. And of course, I also have to make the part on which I will stand. And of course, you have to make the second one. Paint it, make it look nice, put it all back together and give it a test ride. I'm gonna do all that, it's gonna take me a couple of days. For you, it's gonna be a little bit shorter because it's gonna be finished right now. No! <laughs> <laughs> this one was in reverse. All right, so at this moment I realized I was gonna be in for a challenge. It was really hard to get both shoes going smoothly in the same speed. Managed to do a few successful trips.
but most of the time it looked like this. And then this happened. Oh. With the biggest problem being the low startup torque of the motors. In hindsight, probably shouldn't have used the cheapest drills I could find. This Metavo has a way smoother startup than this one. Also tried it on grass. Didn't work much better. So pretty much using them as shoes is failure. I had some pretty cool ideas of putting them in reverse and then doing the perfect moonwalk or a standstill treadmill. Anyways, I do still have these two little small, pretty powerful tracked vehicles. And it got me thinking, what else could I use them for? Mount them to a piece of plywood, little coaster wheel in the back. Oh yeah, put a seat on it, even better. Well, automatic material feeding for the metal cutting bandsaw. If you're a mechanic and you have to get underneath cars all the time. Moving heavy objects on rough terrain. Electric trailer moving. Electric all-terrain snowboard. Automatic feeding system. All right, anyway, that's it for this video. Please don't take it too seriously. Just a quick little project to test the CNC plasma and test the new workshop. Next project though is gonna be pretty serious. Hydraulic exoskeleton makes me the strongest man on earth. Also, I've made a Patreon page, link in the description. If you want a preview of this exoskeleton and way more, support me on Patreon. Also, I will upload all the XF files I've used for the plasma cutter to make this project, if you want to make it yourself for some reason. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.